Well guys, welcome to TA Fishing. I'm down here at Watmore Farm Fishery for an evening session doing some touch ledgering with some of Dad's secret ground bait. Now we know that he's all about secret baits. I don't know what it is. I don't know how I'm gonna fish it really, but the weather's really warm. Gotta get the rods out. Will it work? Who knows guys, but you've gotta be in it to win it. I've got about an hour and a half, that's it. Let's get these rods out. Here's the gear I've been given to use. Some of Dad's vintage rods. We've got an Avon quiver tip rod. Two and a half thousand size reel with six pound line straight through. On that six pound line, I have a size four barbless hook and about eight to 12 inches up the line, a simple BB shot pinched on the line. It cannot get simpler than that, guys. I have absolutely no idea what is in this, people, but it is gonna come up in an episode of TA Fishing really soon, probably on Friday. But obviously once this video's out, it might not be a Friday, the other one might already be up. I'm gonna pinch about that much off and just mould it. And I've been told by the old man to mould it slightly flat. And I'm guessing that's so that it sits on the bottom like that and aids it a bit in casting. The bait is in, the line is sinking. Now Dad tells me that you, as soon as that bait hits the water, you're touch ledgering, so you're almost holding. I need to wind a bit of slack up there. You're holding the line across the sensitive part of your finger. I'm just using my forefinger there. Across that tip of the finger and you feel a slight bump. I'm also watching where the line enters the water for any kind of tweak. See the roach tweaking on it. Oh, it's on. Fish on. Within five minutes, there is a fish on. And this has got a bit of power, actually. He's taken, he's gone left, he's gone right, he's gone all over the place. Look at the bend in that rod. You cannot beat late evening carp fishing sometimes with light tackle, quiver tip rods. Simple rigs. Simple rigs for simple people. Oh, he's come, oh, off. He's come off. Oh, my God. All right. More bait. More bait. More oh, Scalon Scale. found it. Now, he was swirling around that. Look, guys, you can see That's that. That's why he went. If you get that, and you get a real stripping one, yeah. that there, you can see, he was, he was absolutely swirling around the yeah. bait. Give you the bite. So let's get the bait out there. They're definitely on the feed. Handled nets, yes. great fun. Look at the back of that. Look at those markers. I don't know if you can see that in the sun. Hold on. Look at those scales in the sun there. That is really, really pretty. The back of that fish. Get him on the mat, get him. Look Bait at out that. again. Awesome, those markings, that scale. Let's get him in. Well, look at those markings. Here we go. That is golden, awesome secret bait fishing. And touch ledgering. In late summer, you cannot beat it. That's totally awesome. Look at that tail as well. Guys, I'll tell you what, you don't want to be missing the next episode of TA Fishing, because this secret bait is totally awesome. Look at that. Fish number two on the secret bait is here. Touch ledgering is the way to go. How many can I get, guys? Oh. Fish came off, unfortunately, but the way they're on the bite, I don't think it'd be long, guys, until I get another one. Well, I lost that last one, but it wasn't long, guys, before I got this one on the drop. Touch ledgering. And it's not, I don't think it's as big, but again, it looks like a really pretty fish. With that scaly back to them. And I can't complain because the weather is absolutely stunning. It's like a barbel, this one. Oh, that's a common, actually, I think. Common barbel. <laughs> Number two, on the secret bait. Uh, has the hook fallen out? No. Oh, it has, hook's fallen out. <laughs> Love it. 
And this, my friends, is a common carp. Looking lovely and golden in this English sunshine. Well, I'm really enjoying this, I have to admit, the method, the bait, the weather. I hate to say it, but I won't be going home just yet. Ah, oh, it did a massive run, hold on. Watch that spin up. So you just let him. There they go, look at the reel. <laughs> There's a fair bit of drag on that. Do you know what, I don't even think I can put any more on that. No, just let him run, it might be a decent fish. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big head kick, and I reckon this is a good fish. Yeah, by that weight in the water, you know, and you're just pulling through a big weight. He's up on the surface, actually, he is. so he could be fouled. He might be fouled. And guys, when you lose a fish, don't worry. If you get a scale back, it's not your fault. It's a good thing, if anything. Well, they're harder to land. If you accidentally hit foul like a fish, it's a nightmare to get in. I mean, this one's coming. You yeah. know, we, 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 honestly, even I don't know, is that a bigger fish? So, or, or is it fouled? Who cares? So what's in this bait? Let's get what's in, in this bait then. Go on, uh, spill the secrets. You've got to wait for that Friday episode, guys. You've got to wait for it. Oh, and they ping off. They, they off. just ping off. They just ping off. It if it, well, if they ping off, I tend to think they might be fouled. Yes. Do you know what I mean? If you do get it, it pulls off. And there's no point. There's a hook. There's no point yeah. crying over it. It's gone. Get back in the zone. Get the bait out. Try again. What a, what a beep, beep, beep. I think it's on, I think it's on. <laughs> well, we're just going to do a talk. Mike was just about to do a talk to me. I said, chuck the rod out and mad. just leave it. That is mad. And just leave it. And you said, over the years, how many fish you've had. Yeah, bonus just, rods. He said, even if I go for a pee, I'm going to put a rod in the water, just in case. That's what he said. You it's didn't hear it on camera. But obviously, that every time there's your baits in the water, you've got a chance of a fish, haven't you? Ten seconds, that was. That was weird, yeah. As you said it. Mike was actually asking me, his shot kept sliding down to the hook, so I was saying, if you do have that shot, that BB, about, let's say, 10 to 15 inches, it's just to give you a little anchor point when you're touch ledgering. If it does slide down, you go back up, you can put a rubber stop there if you wanted, you could put a knot of a rubber band to stop it sliding down, but what you don't want to do, listen, I've done it, okay, loads of us have done it, bite the shot extra hard. You could break your teeth and get a bill from the dentist, worse, You'll fracture that line, weaken it, and then bang, you're bound to get a good fish that pops it off. And I just said to him, while we do a talk about that split shot, just chuck that bait in the water. I mean, it wasn't there 30 seconds and it went. Oh, nice fish, dude. Yes, go for the snags. Bit of, bit of side strain. Now, we do have a snag down in here. Yeah, he's right um, near it. We don't know what it is. They're going to try and get with some chest waders, but what they said, people, was... The fish is so awesome here, they reckon there's loads of rods in the water being dragged off the rest where people aren't looking or dozing off. Don't ever doze off. Well, you can't when you're a touch ledger and you're in touch with the fish all the time. Oh, a bit bigger, Mike, a bit bigger. It's dead, good size. That is ridiculous. Oh, in the net. I wonder how many people are not going to sleep till we put that next episode up to find out the secret boat. And honestly, I have slayed the fish on it this year. It's like a homemade, I can't tell you, it's not even a recipe. It's not any of those stupid bait things. We're not trying to sell them to you, you know, it's just a really, really good way of fishing with a bait. Hook fell out. Lovely golden colours that's again. That's way bigger, it's eight, that's an eight. Yeah, that's a yeah, seven, eight. Seven, eight pounder. Again, look at the markers on the back. I'll just hold them like that so you guys can see. Look at that. And in a little bit of autumn sunshine. As they say in America, it don't get no better than that. Now, one of the things that you might think, oh, it's a really easy method is there's little, I don't know, tiny tips that old people do that make the difference between catching the extra fish. Now, Mike showed you about moulding it around the hook. If you get some of this special bait we're going to be telling you about, nobody knows what's in it yet, it's a secret, and you mould it around the hook, pushing it down along the shank, but leaving, this is more for casting at distance, leaving a little bit of point showing there. You can, I don't know if you're going to see that, I'll put my hand there. There's a little bit of point showing on there, then that could just nick something as you strike, rather than at quite a distance, you're trying to pull it through the bait. And don't leave it out a long time, more than two minutes, because the roach is going to eat it. Now then, when it's out there, touch ledgering, the way I do it, and have done it for years, 
40, 50 years, barbel and chub fishing, we're just doing exactly the same thing. As I cast out, I have automatically will put the knuckle of the bail arm here. So that's the closest point to the butt here because my hand is round the butt. In fact, I actually hold mine further up the blank. I put my one, two, third of a little finger here and I fold it across like that so that the, the line, if you can see it, is curving over and under there. Now, I've got the quiver tip that I can see the tip going. I'm also it can get a pull here, I can feel the tug, but I just gently lower the rod top so I'm pointing at where the bait went in and I turn the handle until I very, very slowly keep pace with that sinking bait and when it is actually on the lake bed, I just tighten up onto either that BB shot or the weight of the bait and just hold it there, just hold it. Occasionally you'll be lucky enough if it's gravel, you can feel it bump, bump, oh, there's a bump at the other end. You can feel it bumping. And that's where you want to be and just sit there you can support the reel with the palm of your hand like this but i've always always got that across my finger you can sometimes i find in a cold weather i move it i move my finger if you if you're in the winter let's say and it's very cold i find the third one two three finger is a standard one i use but when it's cold this one is softer it rarely gets used a lot so i would use the other hand if you wet it it sticks on the line a bit more and i would hold it like that just this finger with the others, like a sort of guitar string across the tip of your fingers. The only downside to this is, it, you know, you've got to hold two hands out, extended, ready to strike. God, you're joking. No, I'm not joking. No way. That is ridiculous. Well, you're dealing with an expert here, guys, obviously. <laughs> Hold on, don't fall in the water when you say that. Painfully obvious. What, in the chair as well? Yeah, your prize chair. I mean, there's good and there's... <laughs> oh, God. You watch it fall out. Hold on, you, I need to go on widescreen, your head's getting bigger. Oh no, there's, there's, a, there's never a, a camera that's going to get that in there. <laughs> anyway guys, I've been doing it a long time, so that's I've been touch legend for barbel, chub, and it works with carp, big time. That was not faked, that was just, honest to God, straight to camera. Now while we're fighting this fish, if he comes off, no big deal, I'm not really bothered because I know there's another one, like a number 49 bus coming along in a minute. Well I will say, we were talking about dropping a couple of fish on this particular rod that Mike lost earlier on. And I'd already got into a snag and pulled out. It was like a boulder or, or, or maybe some big stones. I personally think if you do that, change the hook because it just specks the point over and then you keep losing fish, losing fish, losing. If you lose two fish or more, look, you can lose one fish. Anybody can lose one fish. Not lose this one. Stop it. If you lose more than one fish, change the hook. No question of that. It is only a hook. Make sure you get rid of that hook. Don't throw it away, take it home, wrap it up on a piece of paper, put it in a bin, or I snap mine with um, a pair of pliers so it doesn't stick in anybody anywhere else, wherever it goes in life after that. You do not want to have it in your tackle box. And I'm finger, finger dragging this as well. This one is lighting my finger up. Ow! Easy, you don't want to put it in the, back in the tackle box and then pull it out and use it on another trip, then lose another two fish. If it's a blunt hook, get rid. While, we, while we're playing this one, this is for kids and beginners. You set the drag so it doesn't, it doesn't break the line, right? Now, a classic, classic mess up mistake that people do, I mean, I'm taking a gamble, I'm trying to teach you this one, I'm playing a fish at the sitting down and talking at the same time. The drag's loose, right? Okay, it's fine. When you go to wind, look, you don't want this. Look, look, look at the spool. It's, it's going that way. The fish, you can't do anything about that. Let the fish take the line, adjust the drag. You do not want to be doing this. See how it's doing this? All, look at the lettering round here, you'll see it spinning. That is a real, real bad thing to do. That way, folks, that is twisting the line up big time. You will ruin your line, you will lose fish, you will weaken it. Oh, it's a cup of tree, look, look at it. How are you still on? You will weaken it, you're better to fish with a a fairly firm drag, if it does spin, just go on anti-reverse and then look, the fish is taking line, just let the line go like that and you're stopping it on the bail arm. Additionally, if you do have a light drag, you saw me do it earlier, if you don't want to bust the fish off, <laughs> it's really lucky that this fish is staying on with all this camera talk, I can assure you. Just rim spool it with the tip of your finger. So if the fish is going out, you can just adjust to put a little bit of extra drag on there. Look, just like that. Then I'll come back on the drag. 
I wind down so the spool doesn't turn. So you're going to pull up, so all you youngsters out there, you pull up, you pull up, you pull up, and you wind down the slack like that. You don't want to wind and have that spool spinning. It is a nightmare. You will ruin your line and you will lose a fish. How this one stayed on, I don't know. So there you go, guys, a nice carp. A few tips on playing fish here that hope, hopefully some of you youngsters will land the fish rather than lose them. Take your time, get your drag set right. Do not wind and let the spool spin at the same time. It's a classic, classic mistake. It's really amateur and you're going to lose a fish. You don't want to lose a fish. You want to be catching them.